On today's show, from teaching English to teaching science, Bronwyn Liber finds out how one couple met on a Spanish trip back in their own high school years. And there's so much speculation going around about if there's going to be school tomorrow. Grant Johnson breaks down an hourly forecast. These stories and more on this edition of HCN Daily. Rocket Rod Nation, today is Wednesday, February 10th, and assuming we come to school tomorrow, we're only one day away from a four-day weekend. I'm Bo Cormican, and we're live from Studio 1060. Yesterday, you saw me wearing my amazing pink outfit, and today, I'm sporting my Rock Hill gear. And if you want to join me tomorrow in finishing up the dress-up days, Annika Hanke's here with some more information you might want to hear. Well, Bo, I'm going to be wearing my favorite red sweater, and we'll see all y'all spirit wear as well. Anyway, here are today's announcements. Not wanting to cook tonight, head over to Kane's in Prosper with your family and friends between 5 and 10 p.m. today and mention that you are here with the Rock Hill High School Rockettes and 15% of the sales will go to the Rockettes. This fundraiser will help the Rockettes with costs such as dance competitions and equipment. Grab some Canes and keep our Rockettes dancing. The first prize for the Taking the Rock Hill Challenge has been announced. As a reward for the first period class with the best crest and humans of Rock Hill pictures, a juice and donut party will be offered to the winning students and teacher next Wednesday during sore time. Virtual students will also be allowed in on the fun and can pick up their treats from the front office if they are a member of the winning class. To be eligible for this prize, remember your class must have both the class crest and humans of Rock Hill challenges 100% complete and turned into Google Classroom. Speaking of tomorrow, make sure to send some love to the girls' varsity basketball team as they will be competing in their first playoff game tomorrow night in Little Elm at 6.30 p.m. The goal is to sell out on the Rock Hill side, so make sure you buy your tickets fast because they are limited. You can refer to Mr. Toth's recent email for the link to buy tickets, and you can email Coach Umble for or Coach M with any questions. That's all today's news. Back to you, Bo. With Valentine's Day just around the corner, here's Bronwyn Weiber with Day 2 of Love on the Hill. So today, we're going to continue work. Your pricey is not due until next week. Meet the Cummings, a couple where one teacher teaches the wonders of science and the other teaches the knowledge of literature. Yet they somehow met through a school Spanish trip back in high school. We actually met on our senior class trip. So I was a officer in the Spanish National Honor Society and our club took a trip to Puerto Vallarta. We have been together for almost 26 years. We've been married for um, 22 years in January. The couple came to the Rock Hill family because... It's going to be a brand new school. Um, Mrs. Cummings has never started a school before I have. It's nice being able to put our footprint on something because we can mold students the way we want to mold them. Through their long and love-filled relationship, they have done many things, both at the highest of highs and lowest of lows. They have held season tickets for their favorite sport, which is soccer, have fought unwanted medical issues, and have raised a family of their own. I have three daughters, a daughter who's a sophomore who attends school here, and she's in the drum line. And then our pets, we have two dogs and a cat and a turtle and fish. <laughs> Despite just being a floor away from each other, the two almost never see each other at work, but have found ways to save money, help the planet, and get a little extra time in together all in one. We do carpool together every morning, which saves us gas and money as far as that's concerned, which is awesome. They described it as... It's almost like not working together, but being in the same building. We'll say goodbye in the morning, and then hey, at the end of the day. When they are together at home, they are usually working to make sure they can give their students the best work possible each and every day. But she proofreads my stuff a lot of times, especially if I think it might need to be edited before I send it out. Um, but she also asks me to make sure that when she puts together material that it's going to be clear. From working together, they have made a list full of fun and memorable memories to tell. Some of their personal favorites being... Last year at our at our campus last year we won um, ugly sweater team of the of the holidays. I've also been called Chandler a lot, um, and so she became Monica. And when we had our little shared shirts, we were Monica and Chandler. Now that their love is in the halls and on the hills for HTN Daily, I'm Bronwyn Liber. A weather pattern arrived this weekend, bringing in freezing temperatures. Some dangerous weather is expected to come in overnight. We sent Grant Johnson outside to see what to expect. Grant, what's it looking like out there? 
Yeah, well, thank you so much, Bo. The biggest concern with this whole weather system is going to be those freezing roads and elevated surfaces. Outside, we're looking at a temperature of about 29 degrees, and I can tell you, I feel about every degree of those 29. Out here right now, we have some frozen trees on the background here at Rock Hill. Now, temperatures for the rest of the day aren't going to get much warmer. We're looking at a high of about 30 degrees. Now, going into those night hours at about 11 p.m. tonight is when the biggest chance of freezing rain is going to be, and that's going to be a 70% chance of rain and that is a pretty consistent percentage until about 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Now walking into school this morning, you may have seen the salt on the ground and that was to break up all the ice. There currently is a winter weather effect until 12 o'clock tomorrow and Prosper ISD administration will be up bright and early tomorrow morning driving the roads to make sure that they're safe for you guys to get here tomorrow. Be sure to stay tuned to all Prosper ISD social media pages and be checking your email consistently for any updates. Back to you, Bo. Thank you, Grant. Art students across Texas have been preparing art pieces both 2D and 3D to enter in the annual vase competition. Brandon McVeigh paints a picture of what vase is and how one senior art student is approaching her last year of the competition. The Visual Arts Scholastic Event, or vase, is an art competition that goes deeper than just what meets the eye. Vase is a struggle, but it's a struggle that makes you better. Um, vase is something that pushes you and it helps you find what you're good at. So for me, my freshman year, Vase was just a competition. I just saw it as something to compete in. I didn't see it as like what it truly is. And Vase is just something to like help you further your designing and like your artistic capabilities. It's kind of like our playoffs for art. Um, so like with sports, how they do like a lot of practice and they have like all of their non-district games and then they have district. That's kind of like what it is for us. So um, there's three different levels for Vase. We have our district competition, which is just competing against schools around us. And then we have our regional competition. So if they place in district, then they immediately go over to regionals. And then regionals is just like a bigger area around us. And if they place at regionals, then they get to go to state. Because of COVID-19 though, VASE will be held digitally this year, affecting one of the most beloved parts of VASE. So one of the main things um, that our students enjoy the most and that us art teachers enjoy the most um, is when you go to the actual event, after all of the interviews get done, after all the artworks have been looked at, they pull out all of the artworks that have participated that day into either a gym or an auditorium or something, and students can walk around and look at all of the artworks, which there's like hundreds of them um, and that most of the time is their favorite part because they get ideas for oh that's cool I wouldn't have never I would have never thought of pouring resin over a painting before but that student did it I'm gonna do that next year even through the difficult preparation senior artist Natalia Silva gave the meaning behind her piece for this year I decided to participate in it because I've been doing it for the past three years and I wanted to come up with something that would help express everything that's happened in the past four years so like the future is never ending right or you can never decide what happens you can only like hope that it turns out well right but your past is done so that's kind of what i've done with my piece this year i wanted to show the change and i wanted to like develop my own style and show like how much i've progressed throughout the years this is more than just a competition but rather an opportunity for young artists to show and gain new ideas amongst others for HTN Daily, I'm Brian McVeigh. That's all for today's show. For HTN Daily, I'm Monica Hinkey. And I'm Bill Cormican. Mask up and rock on.